Today we're talking about client experience. In the rise of uh, B2B SaaS solutions online in the past two years, I think the client experience in the B2B space has become very, very important. But the funny enough that uh, we're talking about B2C client experience in a much more and a much broader way. Today, I have an expert who's got, uh, who knows about client experience in its heart from big luxury B2C brands. Uh, we're going to have a masterclass where she is going to give me the core principles of client experience and I'm going to transfer them into a B2B space. Meet Ksenia. She is uh, a director of client experience from such brands as Louis Vuitton and Alexander McQueen. And I'm very happy to have you and to cover such an important topic for us. Thank you so much, Larissa, for invitation. Just to precise, I was in charge of retail for Louis Vuitton and Alexander McQueen in Paris and in London for the last 15 years of my career. And now, happy developing my business in retail in Middle East. I think Middle East has got such a high potential for client experience within retail as well. So when did you move to UAE? Uh, six months ago. Are you so enjoying it? You're probably not, not, not really now, probably because it's too hot, but are you generally uh, enjoying it here in Dubai? I do. I really love the market, which is very fast pace. It's moving, it's adapting the new technology, and I like to compare that UAE, it's like a five-year-old baby, and Europe is a 50-year-old baby. So all innovations that we want to bring, I really also loved when I was in corporate level to launch them in Dubai, especially in Dubai Mall, and it worked successfully well in all the stores because of the mindset and mentality of this country and the region, which is quite new, very adaptive and flexible. For sure. So yeah. that's the main reason why I moved here, because people are willing to get new innovations, uh, new ways of thinking, new ways of working here. Tell me, just before we jump into, uh, you know, the plan of the conversation that we have, uh, tell me, what exactly can you do for, uh, for, for, let's say, for luxury, for retail, for fashion brands? How can, I, how can you help them? Just in a few words. I improve their turnover. Okay. Through people, clients, and operational excellence. So I start with the audit of the company, of the brand, of the store, of the restaurant, and uh, I evaluate what is their price positioning, what is their market positioning, uh, how do they work with the clients, what is the structure of the team, what is their operations inside, what is the split of their selling floor and back of house, and how we can improve the traffic, how we can improve the conversion rate, how we can bring more traffic to the store and how we can be positioned as an ultimate luxury um, store or luxury cafe or luxury restaurant or hotel with additional uh, added value services that I bring uh, to the market. So, okay, Ksenia, let's define what client experience is. So the client experience, uh, and why do we launch right, right, the client experience? We start with the brand values. Let's take an example of Louis Vuitton. It's a timeless brand, uh, at the same time um, modern, accessible, that want to bring the innovation. How do we want to transmit it? We transmit, first of all, the brands, they go through the products, right? Uh, that's what we buy. But essentially, there are many similar products, luxury products on the market that the client has a multiple endless opportunity to choose, that finally it is the dress that you're looking for, right? So what makes the difference is your client experience and how you transmit those values through each and every point with the client. When the client is uh, opening the magazine, the social media, going to the store, browsing online, all of this creates an image. Mm -hmm. Uh, in client's head. And how would you define, uh, so if you, like, for example, if you refer to any classy client experience definition, what would that be? It's to embody the brand values through all the touch points that you have with the client. Okay. And, and to make it this homogeneous uh, perception of the brand, and that should actually be in coherence between the brand image mm -hmm. that that the company sends mm -hmm. through the PR and once the client is inside the store or browsing online, the perception that it has or talking with the even people that are working for the brand. 
So this it has to be equal and yeah. on the same line. Okay. So uh, let's then uh, get through the core principles of client experience that probably we could take from the luxury brands, but mm-hmm. then I will try and see if they are also relevant for the B2B space. Because okay. apparently there are more B2B companies, but we're talking about B2C companies, client experience much broader. So uh, I want to see if whatever B2C companies were able to achieve from client experience perspective can be transferred in the same way into a B2B space. So let's start with the principles. Yep. Let's do that. And I think I would like to add that it's true. Everything started a long time ago with the luxury brands because that's where the client is going to the store or online and is looking for something add, mm-hmm. so something else. So it's not only the product, you expect the great services, you expect your coffee, your tea or glass of champagne, um, the great packaging. You want to see all the 360 around the product that will please you. So what's happening in today reality and tell me if I'm wrong or right, what's happening in B2B market, is that also in all the aspects of the business, including mass market today, the client is expecting the proximity with the product, accepting personalized services and expecting to be very close to the product, to the brand. So it's not only anymore the main uh, competence of luxury brands, if I may say, but it's also going more to the vast B2C market and B2B. Am I right or wrong? So from the B2B perspective, it is definitely, uh, so you are, so the B2B, let's say client, first of all, B2B clients buy in groups, right? When it comes to a solution. Uh, so we need to market uh, a product to an individual, but we need to consider that B2B clients, they they buy a product as a, sort of as a group of people. So definitely uh, personalization plays a huge role because they don't want to be market. Mm-hmm. They, want, they don't want to get a perception of a product or a brand in the same way, right? Mm-hmm. So they need to get it in a personalized way. So the data that we're getting about their journeys online is very, very important. And uh, definitely they want to take a product from a brand that they trust. Mm-hmm. So and how do you build a trust? This is what you're talking about. So they need to have a perception of a brand as a whole. They need to, they need to feel that the brand is an expert in the solution, uh, that they are buying from them, but they also understand their pain. They also understand them. They also understand the environment that they're dealing in. So definitely uh, that works for the B2B brands as well. Mm-hmm. So coming back to your question, there of the three main uh, core principles of client experience, um, I will define it as personalization. So we've just covered that, just right? Covered yes, that, yeah, definitely right? works for both spaces. For, uh, establishing close relationship with your client and meet your client whenever, wherever he expects you to be. Absolutely works for B2B space as well. And there are multiple technologies that allow us uh, to achieve that uh, from the perspective of on- online. Because when, when we're talking about B2B experience, we're mostly talking about online experience. Uh, mm-hmm. when, when, when the client is not yet interacting with the brand, probably in the B2B, B2C space, mm-hmm. it's easier to do it from other touch points, maybe you can give us an example. It depends on the, what is your target audience is. I'm asked uh, very, the most I think often quas- asked question to me is, uh, do we need to be on metaverse? And I would say yes, because that's the future. The mm-hmm. third dimension that I define is the first one is the physical stores. And in fashion brands, 70% of the clients will still shop in uh, physical space. Right. The, Proof of that, that during the last two years of the COVID, huge expansion of uh, the brands as uh, Laura Piana, uh, Dior new flagship in Avenue Montaigne. So in New York, in Miami, uh, big brands are still opening their new locations and expanding. The second one is online. That's uh, COVID brought uh, obviously that it's not anymore a hype for luxury brands to be online. Uh, But still some of them do not choose it. For example, Chanel brand, you can go online, you can browse online, but you are not able to buy online. And this is according to their strategy. So this is pure strategy. What's behind this strategy, by the way? 
So what's behind? So they want people to come more in store and to have the actual. It's the exclusivity. Experience. It Ex- is the exclusivity. It's the restricted. So what luxury is is rarity. It's exclusivity, right? For all the brands that uh, you're not going to produce to cover all your demand. You always produce less. Yeah. Because you want to create this hunger, right? Yeah. In a way. So you want. It's not about only driving. It's. Um, uh, it's just the you know the the strategy I decided to be established in Dubai and and Chanel decided to be that it's only physical stores right maybe they will be in metaverse we'll see yeah um, so interesting we'll cover the metaverse a little bit later so what I wanted to ask you because you mentioned personalization so personalization is it is a uh, like it's an important but very very overused principle that is being used everywhere mm. say so, uh when we talk about personalization in the b2b space so we're talking about knowing the data knowing the client uh from uh his movements and his actions online to be able to offer him uh or her a certain experience from content perspective that's what we're talking about from uh, the b2b space same so when, when we're talking about b2c mm. so how do B2C create that personalization now? So it also go, covers offline and online. So it is from the way how you enter into the store. And you know, for example, that you are a business, businesswoman with the two children traveling a lot. And usually we know your name and you know we know that we, you don't spend more than five minutes in this store. So the personalization will be for you in the client experience that you will receive a message with your product selection before. You will pick up two product or three product out of ten. They will be waiting for you once you're in the store. They're already waiting for you. You try your shoes and your jacket. You pick up and then you do a mobile payment right on the spot, or you make the you know the transfer, whatever is the most convenient way. Because we know you are the client who doesn't spend two hours in the. Uh, launch and the VIP launch and uh, nothing have to do. It can be very adaptable to another client who's very talkative and very open person and who likes to chat and spend her time and experience uh, the store uh, with everything that it can be the new collections, um, a glass of champagne, um, the new video, the new catalog, uh, the whole defile. So that will be in offline business. The same um, we do in online, so and many brands are working on that. Well, you will get in, and even your like kind of your entering page will be personalized for you. And uh, how do they achieve that? How do you luxury brands achieve that pers- level of pers- personalization? It's through data collection. Data collection, clientelling, CRM is uh, developing the relationship with your client from the first time you enter it to the store without even maybe you bought anything. It's what we call it prospect clients. Uh, we take your details, we take all the notes, there are clienteling tools uh, to enable staff in the store to record all the relevant information, all the details, the things that you like, that you touched, that you paid attention to, what is your lifestyle, do you have children, do you travel, or what do you do for business, etc. So the main point is to, to know the client and to record those of course it is protected by gdpr policy etc yeah. information what is uh, so when i'm listening to you i'm just uh I'm, uh I'm i just understand how important it is it has become actually for the b2b space as well so the things that you're mentioning for the b2c personalization are as important uh in an online b2b space as uh they are in our sort of uh um, other purchases for example so because knowing your audience and knowing what your potential persona potential client likes and offering them what they are ready for Mm -hmm. it is so important for the success i mean not offering them right away let's say a demo or right away uh, uh you know things that they mm. might, n- might not n- not ready yet because they're just exploring the brand yet it is so important to understand that building this client relationship and this contact takes time and stages so b2b needs to take a lesson from b2c that prospecting of the client even online is so very important before we jump into anything that we're trying to convert them Exactly. And the second uh, principle, as I mentioned, is establishing the relationship. So we do collect that information not in order to 
think about the sales. Yes, of course, we do think about the sales, but as to establish the emotional connection with the client. And this How is what the luxury is about. It's about emotions, right? It's where you don't just to buy the jacket to wear the jacket. You want to feel uh, elegant. You want to f- Tra- we want to feel business lady you want to transmit and show it this in a way do you have any examples from the brands that you worked for uh, how do you uh, how it can be achieved yeah. how can you for example make your potential client feel that they are at the right space mm. very good question um, and this is uh, tied back to the first definition of the client experience that I s- mentioned as to transmit those values through each and every touch point. And we think that it is just store or it is just online, but actually it is through all, every senses. It is the colors. <coughs> it's when you open the store and who is opening for you, this, how it is open the door. Do they smile to you or not? How they're dressed? Which pen they use? So luxury is about details and we transmit um, all the details through verbal, non-verbal communication. It is the stuff, the, how they're greeting you, how they approach you, how they are, for example, Louis Vuitton is quite, um, it's about hospitality, it's about traveling, it's about um, this universe dream of luxury, but in a way um, that it's not arrogant luxury, it's yeah. a very uh, sympathetic luxury. So it, sta- it starts for, with the colors that we use, the music that we use in the store, the temperature of the store, the smell that you have in the store entering, because we want to invite you to the universe of Louis Vuitton, for yeah. example, right? Or the universe of Chanel, or universe of Hermès. And all of them will be very different. One, it will be luxury uh, hospitality. Another one will be luxury... Um, which word I can use, uh, like more, you know, like... Uh, Anything. Um, yeah, more close, more yeah. more sharp way. Yeah. So, and it goes even to the nail polish that uh, you, that the staff will use in the store. Okay. The makeup that they will have, the hairs, like all the details. Interesting. Uh, and that that's, uh, will impact the client and will transmit those uh, brand values yeah. through the client experience. Do you have any examples of how brands, for example, maybe not the known brands, but how brands have failed in creating that uh, sort of prospecting experience and how... Maybe you were able to fix, or maybe you have an examples of how of the big wins when the let's say the client experience or the prospecting part has been really fixed properly, and that allowed a pool or a traffic of really right audience to come to the brand. Do you have examples of that, like that? Uh, I do have several examples. Um, uh, let's take an example of um, the repositioning of Alexander McQueen that was done from evening wear to day wear. And uh, for many years it was positioned as a um, evening dresses, cocktails, brand, where you um, very dark colors and something which is difficult to attain mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we wanted to reposition it as a more accessible way day uh, uh, day wear brand um, and it was done in a from A to Z right so it's the products that have been changed but also the store concept uh, so the architect um, the client journey inside the stores the lightning that you will use um, the store design, uh, the temperature of the store, so to create this very day and welcoming atmosphere of the of the brand, and that we transmit through uh, through our stores, as well as then go into staff recruitment and uh, the uniform that they will wear. All of those all those details are developed by the creative director and transmitted through each and every level inside the companies from the top management to the staff that sell the brand. And so you were able to transform it to a different story. Exactly. Did you, cha- did you change the colors eventually? Did you All change? The, co- the products, the colors, and what the was store And what was concept. the new positioning? So the new positioning, we changed it from evening and very dark or side brand yeah, yeah. to a day casual, um, sophisticated, empowering woman brand. Okay, and that allowed the new sort of the, the new, new the new clients, 
the new uh, traffic, uh, the new um, communication, nice. the new perception yeah. of the brand. Okay, so let's uh, let's do the following now. So, uh, so we've mentioned that there are three core principles of client experience, which are embed your values into your experience, uh, build relationship with your clients, and, uh, and the digital experience. It's where we blend online and offline, and we need to make sure that all those touch points they transmit the same uh, atmosphere to the to the client. Yeah, so uh, we call it hybrid experience yeah. for B two B. So, which means uh, you need to be as good offline as online. So both experiences have to be great and they have to be equal and they have to be uh, aligned with each other. So the clients need to have the same kind of perception of a brand. Works for B2B uh, absolutely amazingly. So what I suggest us to do now, because I'm just looking forward to get through like what's latest, what are the latest trends in terms of the client experience in the luxury space? Mm. And let me try and see if they are as relevant and as and there's so much that we can take to the B2B space. Shall we? Yeah. Great. Uh, great question, especially after the COVID that uh, has accelerated uh, omni-channel experience, uh, online business. So I would like to share what I define as the main five uh, main trends in uh, client experience. So first of all, it's uh, the accessibility of the brand and democratization. Starting an example, I would say, uh, in all the flagship stores that you would have in Dubai, I'm all in the key location, Dubai, Milan, Paris, Sauvignon Montaigne, um, New York, right? All those stores, sub, the last floor were dedicated only for VIP client, and no one you could you had to take the appointment there, and uh, not accessible for just browsing clients. So today, in most of those spaces, any client, including students, can go and to see the exposition or to enter the last floor uh, that was previously reserved only for the VIP client. So this democratization of the brands is happening. So accessibility and democratization. So uh, how would I transform accessibility to your B2B space? It's definitely, uh, so the clients need to be able to find you as a brand or your solution anywhere they hang out themselves. Be it an online uh, community, be it a social media group, be it a social media platform, be it a physical business breakfast, be it a virtual mm -hmm. event or a conference, be it anywhere, uh, so your brand or your representative needs to be present at the place where your clients, potential or current clients are hanging out. This is accessibility to me in the B2B space. And now democratization, um, I would say probably open culture that anyone has a saying, even in the feature solutions. Uh, for example, if I want my solution to serve people, I need to hear their opinion if this works for them, if this covers their gaps. So that's why the rise of communities uh, is so popular nowadays. So that's right. how I would trans translate democratization into a B2B space. The second principle that I would like to name is uh, create experimental experience within your um physical stores in luxury business. And um, many examples that are happening because clients are less and less going there just to buy something, right? With the growth of online business and during two years they could shop online mostly. So why they would go to spend time and time is the most valuable asset in people's life is to spend some time. And so for that, the brands are creating cafes restaurants. I've been just the day before yesterday in Paris in the new store in Avenue Montaigne in Dior and it is a fantastic, fantastic place where you just emerge into the universe, into the essence of the brand and you can spend a whole day there uh, browsing, shopping, at the same time go to have a coffee with a friend or, you know, with a staff, a proper coffee, uh, you will go for the breakfast there or for the lunch. There is another restaurant with a very good chef designed there and the plates, uh, glasses, forks, um, staff there, all of that breathes the brand mm. values of those 
you know, you, you feel that you are in your house. Yeah. And then off top of that, you can go to see the exposition, which is also accessible to you. Yeah. So it is really the place. It's not anymore you go to shop for something. You spend, uh, it's an experience that you have. It's an experience that you're having. So, sort of, it's uh, touching or trying your brand probably as much as possible, and also uh, in, in some simple things, right? Not only buying things from them, but also spending your day, spending exactly. your experiencing life, experiencing your brand in in every way, in, in in every aspect of your life. Interesting. How can we translate that into a B two B space? Um, I believe it's also about communities. It's also about, um, uh, you know, co-creating, co-creating products, uh, co-creating uh, messages as well, co-creating content. I think it's all about involving your audience into uh, creating, driving the message uh, that your brand is driving. So I think that's how we would translate this particular trend mm. from the B2C into a B2B. Yeah, the third <coughs> principle is personalization, right? It's personalization of the experience from the moment uh, you open the door or you connect to your customer profile online. Uh, you want to see the products that you like. You want to see that the stuff and not anymore just the servant. They are actually the styling advisors. So they need to read you and to understand which style you like and to bring you the products that already correspond to your personality. For that, they need to ask enough questions and to establish the relationship and the conversation that we were mentioning previously in core principles of uh, client experience to understand who you are, who's yeah. in front of you and personalize maximum your experience uh, from the then, then data collection and then following up if you had a chance to wear your beautiful blouse on your podcast and how you are satisfied with the product yeah. or what that what else they can do for you to look for the extra miles um, that the client will be feeling that he's coming back home he's coming back to his universe he's coming back somewhere that they know him already it's like you know when you're traveling and you're entering the hotel when you've been yeah and they will call you um Miss Larissa, we are happy to see you. Yeah. Right, that creates this connection with uh, with you. The I same. think personalization uh, is a topic that uh, will never be covered enough because uh, technology allows us to do more and more. But it's not only about uh, the technology here; it's about how do you analyze this data and how do you apply it uh, in the right way to create the really personal experience and not to you know reach out like mul multiple amount of people whose profile looks similar but they might not be uh people who need to be marketed in, in in the same way if you know what i mean uh so i think personalization is a very hard topic and uh, it will never be explored i, I mean it will take time to be explored mm. enough uh, because it requires a lot of work with the data as well. And how do you achieve that online, for example? Any examples of online personalization that failed and that worked? Maybe something like that. In online business, it uh, can be quite uh, hard to get uh, if the client has been shopping in um, physical stores for 10 years and then they decided to be online we are unable to capture those, right? So for us, it will be a new client online and then we will merge it. Uh, so many for many fashion brands, it is still a new territory that they discover. And to bring this loyalty, to develop brand loyalty in online space is harder than in, uh, in the physical space for luxury brands. Yeah. But still, as you mentioned, uh, this digital experience, it's where to meet your clients where they expect it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've mentioned, example of Chanel, maybe the core audience Chanel does not expect you to be online. But clients of Balenciaga, which is very hyper Gen Z clients, they expect you to be online and that's where they are, right? And according to metaverse also, the metaverse is a new hype, right? Where yeah. do you how do you want to be there or not? Well the, uh, my answer is yes, if your clients expect you to be there, you should be there. Yeah. But that's not relevant for all the brands. It doesn't yeah. mean that you need to follow the trends. 
Thing. You need to think, does it fit to your strategy? Does it fit to your client experience yeah. or not? Understood. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, what would be after the personal, what would be the next principle? Uh, what would be the next trend? So we kind of covered personalization. And to me, it's an open conversation. Personalization, there's a technology conversation. There's how do you tackle different profiles, which look similar, for example. How do you create that online journey, which is granular? And uh, I mean, it's an open conversation. And uh, thanks for sort of bringing the input about what's happening in the big brands. I've, I've also reflected a little bit on what's happening mm. in the B2B, but I think it is to be continued. I mean, it's worth of a sort of uh, separate episode, probably talk only about personalization. It's true. So the next, uh, the next trend? It's the, it's the digital experience. Is this hybrid experience that you mentioned okay, is okay. Uh, still growing uh, after the COVID, after still the stores are reopening. We have noticed that many clients, they still continue to shop online. So it's just coming in a digital way. Sometimes they will just put it in the basket and then they will decide, okay, I will go to the store and still try it on. Or they would prefer, okay, I'm going to buy it, but I want to still receive my uh, shoes in the store to try them on and maybe to change to another size or to another color. Or they will be actually in the store, but they're traveling uh, to from Milan to Paris yeah. next day. So mm-hmm. will, they, or they will ask to actually deliver that product to Milan in order not to carry it with them in the suitcase. So this is whole omni-channel experience. We can call it omni-channel, we can try hybrid, we can try digital. There are many ways to, to, to call this experience, but the main point is that we meet your client where he expects you to be, and we try to predict and forecast the expectations to the client, to meet the expectations of the client, and in the best scenario, to exceed the expectations of the client. So we always go to extra miles of where you want to meet, uh, the additional packaging, or then to eat, to add additional services uh, to the client, and, and a cart, you know, handwritten cart yeah. with a delivery. Yeah. So this is... Um, yeah, it's interesting it because uh, so when it comes to hybrid experience, it, it's so very important for um, uh, the B2B space as well. And it's mainly about like, yes, be where your clients are expecting you to be. And uh, in the B2B space, it is achieved mainly with uh, definitely with the technology, with the data, with understanding what clients are doing on your digital asset, like on your website, on the platform. But also what's important is uh, to get to those, we call it dark social channels, communities uh, where people are creating that word of mouth, Mm -hmm. where people are discussing things, chats, for example, uh, messengers, uh, where people are discussing things that I might not actually, you know, discuss anywhere let's say um they, they might they, they, you will not you will not be able to learn about them anywhere so uh, and unless you are presented on all the places where clients are talking about their pains and uh how we translate that in the b2b space how do we create them value how do we personalize how do we present and create that hybrid experience we are giving them the content that they are expecting to see from this brand to be able to create that trust, be it an education, be it a piece of advice, be it something where they can sort of talk about their pains, their current pains and how they mm, Mm -hmm. can solve those pains. Anyway, this is definitely translated into B2B space uh, very nicely. So when it looks like from our conversation that most of the things are working for both spaces, B2C and B2B, Mainly because I think we're living in an era of business to people. Exactly. So anything that we're doing, we are marketing this and selling it to people. So it makes sense to build relationship with people, not with businesses, for sure. You're right. And it is finally, it's human to human, right? Where everything, what we do. And as we like to, 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 to talk in luxury, all the operations, all the things that um, should not be visible for the client. So head, head, heart, head, heart, and hands. 
And what we want to see, the clients only see is our heart. Is actually the human who is willing really to help the client to find what he's looking or she's looking for. Uh, all the rest of how it is done, well, how it is delivered, where it is storage, etc. We don't want to see the client. So everything has to be very smooth. And you mentioned about word of mouth. Do you know that many companies in business were always talking about the targets, the KPIs, um, cross-selling, conversion rates, uh, etc., etc., right? Through online and offline business. But many companies, what they do today is the only one KPI that they establish for their business is NPS score, or it is a mystery shopping. It's a word of mouth, actually. Mm -hmm. it's How do we measure the word of mouth, by, uh, by the way? There are, uh, there are, there are um, companies and there are services which calls uh, Net Promoter Score, um, that actually sends the questionnaire to the client and you rate your experience, which is very, very um, personalized experience that you had. If there is no any questions of, uh, was it good, was it not good, like the steps. No, most generally, you will just have to rate your experience from one to 10, was it good or not? Did it correspond to your needs or not? It's only one question, were you happy? Or you were not happy. Does this question give you, as a client experience expert, does it give you a lot of information? So, for example, if a person rates it one, two, three, five, ten, whatever. So, does it give you a it lot gives, of answers? It gives because this is the one question. So, the first question that is already enough for us to understand if everything at brand level we are doing well and the clients what we want to transmit is actually transmit it in a correct way. Did we understand who is in front of us or not? Because we need to personalize, right? The way you speak to me, probably you don't speak to another person in the same way. Um, do, we, is it, uh, do we correspond or not? And um, the secondly, there are more 10 other questions that would uh, go into the details of uh, were your staff proactive enough? Uh, did you feel comfortable? Or was it served in the right way? So all those uh, granular details about the experience where we can understand what we should improve or not all right so and just to conclude our conversation for today i'm sure it's not the last time we talk because client experience is such a broad topic and today we discussed the core principles and we discussed the key trends uh happening in their client experience all over um and uh what should my and your audience do after they hear and listen to this episode one action so w what would you want them to do uh, remember the most valuable, memorable ex client experience they ever had. And follow Xenia because <laughs> she knows everything about client experience and she can fix your brand. Thank you, Xenia. Thank you, Larissa.